Now this is a Mercedes formatic unit off of a 9G Tronic, 9-speed automatic transmission. And Mercedes likes to designate this the 725.0. Now unlike the earlier formatic unit that was part of the 7-speed, the 7G Tronic, here with the 9G Tronic it's totally separate. It has its own lubrication sump with a fill plug and the drain plug. Here we see the output shaft of the transmission. Here we see the drive shaft going to the front differential. And here we're going to the drive shaft going to the rear differential. Now, I do have a universal joint integral here. And it's very, very important when I take a look at the drive shaft going to the front differential. It indeed also has a universal joint. And this is the type that is staked in. This is not really serviceable separately. I'm not saying it's impossible, but difficult. Now you'll notice that I indeed have a blind spline. There's really only one way that I can put this drive shaft onto the shaft. So you don't really have to worry about upsetting the phasing between this universal and this universal. Indeed, a blind spine. And of course, you want to put some grease in there liberally, and this is the seal. Here we see the universal joint is sealed there within the cavity, and I have a lip type seal, and then a inner race, inner protection there for that lip seal. Now, obviously, with the 9G Tronic that uses the magnesium aluminum alloy case, all bolts going into it are aluminum. And this is no exception. Here I have a magnet, as you can see, this is indeed an aluminum bolt. Now obviously their lecture on once use, etc, etc, that might be fine, but where in the world are you going to get replacement bolts? When removing these, be careful the torque is not excessive. These are actually T50, and these all came loose without any problem with just simply a conventional 3 8 inch ratchet. Now we'll go ahead and tear down and take a look at the design of this later formatic unit. And as we were mentioning here, here we see the drain plug, and there we see the fill plug. All right, here we see the mounting for the formatic unit. There's the output shaft to the 9G Tronic. I have one of these aluminum elastomer coated gaskets, possibly could be reused. There was no silicone here at all. And uh, it takes just a little bit of coaxing there to pull the formatic unit loose from the gasket and then she slides right off. Okay, here we see the Mercedes 9G Tronic, 9-speed automatic transmission. They designate this the 725.0. Here we see a unit from a 2017 S550. Now, of course, this was a wrecked vehicle. It was a donor vehicle. This was purchased there from the wrecking yard as a good transmission, very low mileage. Now... The uh, formatic unit is absolutely separate now from the transmission, just like a conventional transfer case. Here we see the drive shaft going forward to the front differential and here to the rear differential. Now this is retained with aluminum bolts there to the aluminum magnesium case. And as you can see, this is a magnet and this is indeed an aluminum bolt. Uh, it's recommended that when removing these, always use conventional hand tools. As I was removing the T50 Torx fastener, it, uh, all of them came loose easily with just a conventional 3 8 inch ratchet. Now, after removing the Torx fasteners, 
from the formatic unit. Now this formatic unit has its own lubrication reservoir with a drain plug and fill plug. There is an elastomer coated aluminum gasket between the formatic unit and the transmission case and it requires maybe just a little bit of co coaxing with a carpathane mallet there but then she just slides right off and this could conceivably be done in the vehicle easily. Of course be careful don't drop it on the floor and it's really not that heavy. Okay, here we're going to start the uh, disassembly process of our 9G Tronic. As we mentioned, this is a low mileage unit. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, we'll start out by removing the oil pan and the valve body. There is no mechanical linkage whatsoever on the 9G Tronic. The control is through this 5-pin connector. I have power, ground, can high, can low, and diagnostics. Now as we remove the valve body, which we'll show in just a minute, you want to push down or push up, per se, on this connector so that it comes loose smoothly there through the case. There is an O-ring, and uh, this is just simply to hold a aluminum guard to protect the connector from the exhaust. Just a heat shield. Okay, here we have the uh, plastic oil pan. We have two filters that are integral with the pan. One is for the engine-driven pump, and the other is for an electric oil pump, which we'll see in just a moment. And we have a corresponding series of aluminum, and these are called inverse torques. So this is an E10. And uh, when I replace this pan, of course the filters, the magnet, and usually the bolts all come together as an assembly and I will replace it as an assembly. And this would be when I service the transmission or overhaul the transmission. Now obviously a transmission service on this is about 75 to 100,000 miles. So be a few years before these start coming in the shop for that. However, this transmission has been out since about 2013. And uh, this specifically is for the 2015, 16, 17 S550. All right, now, on the 9G Tronic, here I see a plastic drain plug. Now remember, this is plastic. I'm just simply using an 8 millimeter metric Allen. She pops right out. There's the O-ring seal. Now I have a standpipe here that has three positions. And one position is going to be um, drain. The other position is going to be check. And then the third position is going to be fill. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. Now... What I'm going to do is I remove the aluminum fasteners. Now it takes just a little bit of coaxing because remember I got to pull the two filters with their O-ring there from the corresponding ports and the valve body and the electric pump. And uh, here we go. Here we see our standpipe. And sure enough, as I look at this, yep, I got these different positions here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Obviously, this is going to be the drain position. And there we're going to have the fill position. And uh, here as I go all the way, I guess this is actually the fill position because I'm forcing the fluid up and it's pouring out here into the pan. This would be the level check position and this would be the drain position. Now, how do you turn this? Now, when working with the 9G Tronic, there's actually a plastic tool that I can slip up into the standpipe and turn it to these positions. But you'll notice it's very easy to turn. And you'll see what we've done here. I'm just using a conventional screwdriver, and I just slip it up in there. And as you can see, I can move it to the different positions. Fill. Check. And drain. Now, of course, remember, if you're draining the fluid, you're going to be replacing the pan. Of course, what I'm doing is very non-intrusive and is not damaging anything. It's kind of hard to see there. There's looks like you could use an Allen wrench, but you'll notice it doesn't have the right number of sides, so it's really not an Allen wrench. There is a plastic tool and a plastic cup that kind of helps you from making a mess. But uh, here at the transmission shop, the unit came in. We're going to drain it. We're replacing the pan. We'll position it to the fill position. Go ahead, pump the fluid in. Now, how do we pump it in? We actually have a 
Actually, it's made by Snap-on. It's a fluid extractor, fluid injector, and it's specifically for engines or transmission, so it holds probably, oh, three gallons of fluid. And we'll go ahead and just pump the fluid in, fill the pan up. Of course, we have a recommended level or recommended quantity. And we'll be, the engine will actually be running while we're doing this. There, it's on a, a lift, and of course, the vehicle is level. Then we'll go ahead and move it to the check position then back to the fill position, put the plug back in, and show you she's ready to go. All right, now, as we look at the pan, we actually see one, two, three, four positions. Now, as we look at this, position number four is obviously drain. So, and I'll go ahead and line it up with position number four with drain for drain. Now, I noticed that when I put it in position number two, that my check drain port is closed and my check port is open. And as we go over here and move it to position number two, here I see this would be check. And then as we go to position number four, this would be fill. You see, everything's sealed off. Oh, I'm sorry, this is drain. This is going to be drain. So there we have drain, check. And now here it's all sealed off. And of course, I have a straight shot right up through here. So if I were going to fill it, here is where I could fill it. Now, of course, if I moved it back to position number three, what happens the way our machine works is that we're just pumping the fluid in. We know how much we're pumping in. The fluid's very expensive, so we're not going to put too much in. We want to get it with plenty, make sure that we have enough. And also we want to be careful to catch anything that overflows. So there would be my check position. Here I've got the check port sealed off. And I can pump the fluid in very quickly, you know, come out and then fill up the pan. Now, here we see our two filters, a rather elaborate filter media. These are not separate from the pan. Looks like you might be able to work this one off, but this one's definitely permanently attached. Here we see our magnets to catch any ferrous metal that's uh, collecting in the fluid. That's all, it's also an indicator of a failure, and this all comes together with the pan assembly. All right, uh, here we're going to go ahead and remove the valve body from our 9G Tronic. Now, only the aluminum bolts I need to remove. Now, they're all the same length, with the exception of this one here for the bracket for the motor of the electric pump. And remember, they're aluminum, so certainly want to avoid using an impact. Now this is the first time these have been removed. This unit has not been disassembled. And as you can see, the torque from Mercedes, this is from the factory, is very, very small. These are all aluminum, just the aluminum bolts is all I have to be concerned with. And we're going through, loosening each one. As you can see, each one, just a twist of the speed wrench is all it takes. Now, if you're in a hurry, you could use an impact, but when putting it back, I'm afraid if we're not careful, these aluminum bolts will ring right off. Now, obviously, the steel bolts, we want to leave these alone because this is part of the retaining of the two halves of the valve body and, of course, the transmission control module, which we'll see in just a moment. Now, all of these aluminum valve body bolts are the same length with the exception of the one bolt there for the bracket of the oil pump. Okay, after all the bolts are removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the valve body. Now just wiggle it very gently. Be sure and push on the electrical connector with your hand. I'm going to have the pump suction and the pump discharge right here with an O-ring, so it's just going to need a little bit of coaxing there to lift up. And then up she comes. Almost there. Not much. And of course, obviously, if you're doing this in the vehicle and you're dropping the valve body, she's going to be coming right at you. 
here I'm just kind of coaxing this with a plastic pry tool. Kind of pick it up off the O-ring. That's all it was. And here comes the valve body. All right. Up she goes. And what do we see here? Here is our electrical connector. We see power ground, CAN bus high, CAN bus, bus low, and diagnostic. Okay, here we see the pump suction. This is the pump discharge. This is a check valve. Now remember, this is stop stop start system. So I'm going to actually be shutting the engine off when I'm sitting here at a light. And what happens, the engine driven pump stops, but the electric pump can start up. And it has its own check valve. And it's supplying hydraulic pressure, working pressure for the unit. Here we see our three speed sensors. We actually have output, turbine, and intermediate. Here we see the actual processor of the transmission control module. And uh, here we have a Hall Effect switch for the um, uh, uh, parking pole linkage. And we see the electrical connection there for the parking pole solenoid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and go set it in the oil pan. And we'll come back to this later on. All right, here we see the parking pole linkage, and the parking pole is applied by a strong spring force and released hydraulically. Now, this solenoid is actually controlling a latch, which we'll take a look at in a moment, and that latch can be unlocked either electrically or hydraulically, which we'll see in just a moment. And here we see a permanent magnet. This is for the Hall effect switch on the transmission control module that's indicating park, not park. And again, there is no external linkage whatsoever. So if I can't communicate with the TCM to tell it to uh, release the uh, parking pole and start up the electric pump, at least to supply hydraulic pressure to release it, I'm not going to be able to take the transmission out of park. That might be a little difficult here if I'm trying to tow it. And as you can see, the default is park. And here we see the parking pole has pushed the, I mean, the, the parking linkage has pushed the parking pole into the parking gear. Okay, one clue when you're dis, di, uh, disassembling the transmission, if you see a steel fastener, well, you know that this is not going into the case. So as I, I'm removing the parking ball actuator, we don't need to disturb the steel fasteners, only the aluminum. And so they, as you can see, this transmission has not been apart before. This is its first time. And here, just a little wrist action with the Speed handle is all that's necessary. None of these fasteners are torqued. Actually in inch pounds. Now this bolt is special. It's going to have a shoulder on it. Here we see the pump discharge which is actually made out of metal and it's actually a ferrous metal. It's actually steel and the pump suction is actually made out of plastic. So here comes its fastener. You'll recognize this is different from everything else. This is the only bolt like this in the transmission. It is made out of aluminum, but it has that sh shoulder. Okay, here we're removing the parking pole actuator. There we see the spring. It's forcing the parking pole actuator into the parking pole to force it into the parking gear. It's hydraulically released. Now, this is just simply the lock right here, and this lock can be released either hydraulically or electrically. Now, actually, if I'm running down the road and all of a sudden I have a complete electrical failure, well, I don't want the transmission to just bam into park. So, as you can see, what happens is that I am holding the parking pole in the release position. Now, of course, when the vehicle comes to a stop, there are two ways that I can go ahead and release this lock. I can do it hydraulically or I can do it electrically. And if I release the lock, then 
the spring is going to force the parking pole into the park position. So here we have one unit, and we'll take a look at this and disassemble it here in just a moment. Now while we're here, we'll go ahead and this is the pump discharge and the pump suction. And this is an off-axis vein type pump. It's actually designed very much like a power steering pump. In fact, as you'll notice the name on the pump is actually a popular powering steering pump manufacturer for Mercedes. Here we see the pump suction and the pump discharge. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and take our bell housing bolts loose. They're all aluminum and uh, we have two aluminum bolts that are coming in from the other side. We'll leave those alone. We're going to be putting the transmission up on the bell housing and then slipping the case off of the gear train. Okay, here we're proceeding with the disassembly of our transmission. Now, the T45 Torx fasteners, these are the ones that I'm going to be removing. And they're made out of aluminum. Now, these smaller T30s, we're not going to remove these at this time. That's not necessary to remove these. We don't want to do that. That has nothing to do with retaining the bell housing there to the case. Now, the bell housing is actually made out of aluminum, but the case is the magnesium aluminum, and these are all aluminum bolts. And again, this is the first time this transmission has been disassembled. And here with just a speed handle, that's all the torque on that aluminum fastener. As you can see, they have quite a collection of aluminum fasteners there going around the bell housing. But the individual torque on each aluminum fastener is relatively small. Now these are actually torqued to yield or stretched and we're supposed to replace these, but hey, good luck. This is indeed an aluminum bolt. And what I mean by good luck is, where would I get a collection of them? Now, as far as a uh, paper rubber kit, an overhaul kit, I am able to buy that from a company there in Germany for this transmission. As we can see, this front seal got pulled out, and the reason why is when it was shipped to us, the torque converter shifted forward and damage the front seal. And of course we can pop that out and put a fresh one in there and we'll carefully inspect there the converter hub where it rides against the bearing surface. The pump is actually going to be driven by a chain and it's off axis so it's going to be over here on this side. We'll see that in just a moment. All right now what we've done here is we've removed our 16 aluminum bell housing bolts I notice that there is a sealer on the threads from Mercedes. And again, Mercedes does want us to replace these. These are the torque to yield aluminum fasteners. But uh, sometimes it's hard to get a replacement. Now, there are two more bolts that are still in the bell housing, which we'll remove as we separate the case from the bell housing. I'll be tipping it up one end. You'll notice that the turbine shaft does extend beyond the front of the bell housing, so I actually have a hole cut in the workspace, so this will slip through the hole and the case will lie flat against the table. Okay, we're ready now to remove these last two bolts, so retaining the bell housing to the case. You'll notice that this is an aluminum sheet with elastomer coating on both sides. This is a Special gasket. They're actually two different types. You want to be sensitive if you're replacing this, what type you're getting. And uh, here we have the case vent. So we'll go ahead and take loose these two bolts and we'll be ready to separate the case from the bell housing. Alright, now what we want to do is separate the case from the bell housing and it has a tendency to stick a little bit there to our aluminum elastomer coated gasket. Um, I hate putting steel tools here between the magnesium aluminum case because it's just going to mar it. Now what this is, is this is actually a plastic wedge. And what's this for? This is a chainsaw wedge. That's right, when you're cutting a log and uh, you need to wedge apart the sections of the uh, wood there to get the chainsaw in it, you use this wedge. And I have a couple of different sizes. It's made out of plastic. Now why plastic? Because what happens if the chainsaw chain makes contact with the wedge? 
nothing. It just cuts the wedge. And the same thing here. Instead of scratching or marring the aluminum, what happens is that uh, I scratch or mar the wedge. Which the wedge is pretty tough. And it doesn't cost very much. I think this came from Northern. So, got a collection of these. Works very nicely. All kinds of uses. Okay, now we're ready to separate the case from the bell housing. So we just grab the case, wiggle it, and pick it up. All right. And she came right off. 